Florian, thank you so much for being here and welcome to the Brain Film Fest. My name is Alicia. Um, we just came out of theater to see your film. Um, congratulations. It's the word that keeps coming back to me is it's riveting. And really from the get go gets you in and doesn't let you go. I read that you like to have the audience be a, an active participant in the narratives and kind of figure it out themselves. I think in this film that is accomplished uh, amazingly, obviously, um, almost literally, as we're in the character of Anthony Hopkins from the get go, even though we don't know that. Um, how did you, what was the process of getting so well in the skin of someone suffering from dementia? Is it, was it clinical research or did you have a personal? No, it was, I made no research, but um, I have to say that I had a, a personal experience about, about this. Um, I have been raised by my grandmother, actually, and she was like my mother. And she started to suffer from dementia when I was 15. So I think I knew a bit what it was to go through, you know, this painful process and to, to feel that you are, you know, impotent in a way, you know, and to understand that love is not enough. You know, you can love someone, but the moment comes when it is not enough. So I knew a bit about that. But I also knew that um, everyone is concerned you know, by this kind of issue. So that I was not trying to tell my own story. You know, in my, in my opinion, it's not enough. You know, I knew that everyone is concerned because everyone has a grandmother or a father and everyone have or will have to, to deal with this situation and, or with this fear, you know. And what happened is that I'm French, as you can hear, and I'm a playwright in Paris and the father was first to play. And, uh, and, and when it was on stage, I was really surprised and moved to see the, the response of the audience, you know, because every night it was the same, meaning that people were waiting for us, you know, after every performance, not to say congratulations, but just to, to tell their own story or to share their own story. And I realized that there was something cathartic about it, you know, just to, just to remember that we are all in the same uh, boat in a way. For you, who's the protagonist of the film? Her or him? I'm curious. Yeah, it's a good question because, you know, when you, when you write a script, you have to be able to answer to that question, you know, because there are rules. One of those rules is to tell the story from one's perspective. And I didn't follow those rules in, in the film because at the same time, you are completely with Anthony. And as we said, we are in his head. So it's, it's supposed to be in from his perspective. But on the other hand, you know, it's not only the, the, the story of this man losing his bearings. It's also the story of that daughter trying to do her best to, 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 yeah, to face that situation. And, 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 and then to me, it was like a door for the audience that could be open anytime, you know, to, because I wanted to, the audience to, to, to feel related to this story either from, you know, Anthony's perspective and the fear of mm -hmm. what could happen to me or through her perspective about what should I do when I will become the parent of my own parents. And it's, it's, it's such a, a painful situation and a painful dilemma because there is no answer. There is no good answer. We, it's beyond what is right, what is not right. It's just pure human, uh, experimentation you know yeah it's funny because one of the things i was going to ask you was if you were trying to answer these questions of what do we do when we become the ones who guide our parents uh, i think that art is here is a place for questions and not a place for answers mm -hmm. and everyone comes in that film or in the play or whatever with his own story with his own experience with his own sensibility and there is like an echo on us, you know, with who you are. And that's the reason why I think the audience is part of the narrative, is part of the story, because everyone has to, to do his own job, you know, to make it meaningful. Curious, when you were working with Sir Anthony Hopkins and Olivia Coleman, did you speak uh, about the illness in itself in terms of the process? I mean, did you go over what dementia was or was it, what was the process with? The, the process was to try not to speak about the, the disease because I didn't want, you know, the film to look a bit um, fake or, you know, 
I think that I, many conversations with Anthony was about, please let's forget about the fact that this is about dementia because I don't want from the very beginning to have this man that is already, you know, in the pain. I just want you to be here, you know, and just to be as you are, no acting required in a way. And let's see what happened. What see what would be your emotions that would overwhelm you? Because I wanted him and he's really brave. You know, he's such a, an amazing artist, meaning he knew from the very beginning that it was the challenge just to be in front of the camera and suddenly to, to use uh, what he has, you know, because he's 83, you know, so mm -hmm. it's, he felt very connected to those fears and those questions and it was disturbing for him. And that's why I said that he was really brave because, uh, you know, it was sometimes painful also. Uh, well, I'm curious to when you did the adapting it from the play to the movie, what were the things that you learned or nuances you, you brought out more adapting it to making, you know, having the use of the camera work and obviously the space. I mean, my God, the use of the space in the apartment. You know, when you start thinking uh, of adapting a play into a film, you always have the same ideas or the same advices, which are to write new scenes outdoors to make it more cinematic. And this is something I, I, um, I, want, I didn't want to do. I, I, I wanted to stay in this apartment so that that space could be called like a mental space. And when I, when I wrote the script, so very early on, I remember that I draw the layout of the apartment, you know, as if it was one of the main characters of the story. And because I wanted that set to be like a labyrinth, you know, that's mm -hmm. why there are so many doors, so many corridors. And, and, and also I wanted to, to find a way to, to, to have changes or metamorphosis in this uh, apartment, because as you have noticed at the beginning of the story, we are in Anthony's apartment. There is no doubt about it. You recognize his uh, space, knickknacks, uh, pieces of furniture, and step by step, always in the background, you know, in, in a, I hope in a subtle way, mm -hmm. things are disappearing, or colors are changing, or it's not exactly the same, but it's it's not strong as a difference. You, you cannot tell exactly what happened. What I wanted is to have at the same time, the feeling that you know where you are because you recognize the space, you recognize the way to travel into it. But at the same time, you're like, something has happened. I, I can't tell what happened, but something, it's not exactly the same. It, mm -hmm. it you all, you know? Yeah, it's definitely, you don't give it away at the beginning at all. I mean, you start watching this film, you don't know, what it's going to be about. It feels like, I mean, it literally feels like a thriller at first. Like what's going yeah. on? What's going I, on? Wanted, I wanted exactly the film not to be obvious, you know, because, you know, there are so many films about dementia and some, some of them are very good and sometimes very moving. But personally, I'm, I'm not excited when, you know, when you see where you are and where you are going and you just attend to the destination. And I don't like, you know, personally as a viewer, when you just have to sit and watch the story already told. I thought that it would be more, uh, immersive and disturbing to just to try to go through that labyrinth without being aware of where you are going. And that's why at the beginning I shot the film as if it, it, as if it was a thriller, because mm -hmm. it, we were like, okay, it's not about dementia. It's not about, it's just about you. You have, you are in your apartment and suddenly there is a stranger. I mean, what are we talking about? It's anxiety. It's a, a feeling of danger. <laughs> Thank you so much for participating. Thank you and, so much. Um, we thank you so much from here from the Brain Film Festival. Thank you for your welcoming. And looking forward to your next movie. Thank you. <laughs>